Gasta Volos. <clears throat> the question that the Ramchal was dealing with and that we answered, the Das Tavunos answered, but we read it from the English version of the Das Tavunos because of the complexity of the idea and also because the idea, the answer deals with some Kabbalistic concepts. So we read the English, the English Das Tavunos has an introduction to this whole section, which is section 114. It's on page Tzadik, page 90 of the Das Tavunos, paragraph 114, Kuf Yudal, if using the paragraph. And the question was, the Ramchal said through the Seichel, there is only one hashpa, one thing that the Rabbon Shalom sends to the earth, one emanation, for lack of a better word. There's one emanation that God sends to earth, and that's good, toy. God did not create an emanation of bad, of suffering, of disease. And the way the Ramchal explained this was that it's like a tap of a sink. The tap opens up, the water runs. The tap closes, the water doesn't run. That's the Shefa. So the, 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 as we said, the default setting is not that a person will live forever and God has to come and kill him, God forbid. There's nobody that lives forever and nobody's heart pumps on a default setting. It pumped a second ago, it's going to pump the next second. I was able to see yesterday, I'll be sighted today. And that's why, as we said, you make all these brachas in the morning, Pekeh, Ivrim, Matir Asurim. You wake up in the morning, you say, God, thank you, I can see. But I was able to see yesterday, but that doesn't mean anything. So there's no default setting that says what was is going to continue. It's Machadish Bechol Yoim Tomid Masei Bereshis. Every second, there's a new miracle. And the Rabboni Shalom is sending this hashpa'a, hard work, hard beat, hard work, kidney work, liver work, eye work, eye drums work, nervous system work. And the Ramchal explained to us that the Rabboni Shalom can shut off the tap or partially shut off the tap. Shut off the tap, loyalenu, means a person's going to die. The hashpa'a is not coming. Or the Rabboni Shalom can turn off slightly the tap. And the kidney hashba is not coming, or the liver hashba is not coming, or the brain hashba is not coming, or the eye hashba is not coming, and therefore different diseases come as a result of turning off the hashba. But you don't automatically live and God sends a person a heart attack. God doesn't send a heart attack. God didn't create the heart attack. He has a hashba, heartbeat, heartbeat, heartbeat. And when, for whatever reason, the Rabbi Shalom decides that a person's not doesn't merit that miracle, then the miracle ceases, and then the ramifications become self-evident. To which the neshama is, that's all good and well, but we know that there are many diseases that are caused by bacteria, viruses, etc. And these things are living organisms. You can see them. And things cannot be created through header. Things cannot be created by turning off the faucet. You can turn on the faucet and water comes out. When you turn off the faucet, there's no water. But turning off the faucet, an elephant's not going to be created by turning off the faucet. You can't create a tulip when you shut off the faucet. So in order for something to actually be created, you need some kind of affirmative act to create it. It can't just be not doing something that gives rise to something. And that was footnote 198 on page Sadik. Obviously, someone created, and the only quote-unquote someone that can create is God. So that means that God created viruses and bacteria. So the neshama says to the saint, oh, how can you tell me that God only created this emanation of good, but no emanations of Ra? Under a microscope, I can see these things crawling around, these bacteria and these viruses. They cause terrible diseases. And if they're organisms that are living, and I can see them moving around on the microscope, they were created, and God created them. So how can you say God didn't create disease or suffering. So we read the introduction in English, and now we'll read what we saw in English, we'll read in Hebrew. And the basic answer was that God, 
for those, again, tomorrow's schedule is Gemara. And then after Gemara, we do at 10, 15, we do Chumash, we do Pasha's Bereshis. So we, the, the Ramban, Nachmanides, that we've been studying in Bereshis, is very similar to the Ramchal. The idea is that the first step of creation was Yuli, although the Ramchal doesn't quote Yuli, the Ram, although the Ramchal doesn't quote Yuli, the Greek word Nachmanides does. And this Yuli is an undifferentiated particle. If you recall, when we learned Bereshis Nachmanides, we read the English art scroll on Yuli, and the English art scroll called the Yuli a speck, an undifferentiated particle. When we read the Ramchal Das Tavunos in English, they used the same word. The original particle of creation was undifferentiated. In other words, it was this Yuli, this Tohu, that was completely full of potential. And in there was potential tulip, but not the tulip. And in there was potential uh, elephant, but not the elephant. And the Ramban explained that the Tohu eventually get, takes on into it the four elements of creation, air, water, fire, uh, and earth. And from the Rabbon Shalom takes these four components and mixes them together and pulls out of the Yuli enough earth, enough water, enough air, whatever he needs, and he makes something. He pulls out a lot of fire and not so much earth to make a lion. Because a lion is ferocious, he runs like a fire. And so the Rabbanu Shalom uses this yuli, which he created out of nothing, and it has all these things in it, only in potential, because there's no tulip in there. To make the tulip, you have to take out different elements and make it into a tulip. And in this undifferentiated particle, there's shefa, the shefa toiv, this good shefa, which is why God created the world. And mixed into there is also the header, the idea that Shefa can be cut off. And now when you take out from this particle, this undifferentiated particle, you take out something, some Shefa tov, and you take out this idea of header Shefa, lack of Shefa, and you mix them together. You take the perfect Shefa, and you mix it together with this thing that cuts off Shefa, you now have an, un an imperfect Shefa. That's already stage two. In stage one, you only have the Shefa that's cool potential, completely undifferentiated. In stage two, when the Rabboni Shalom is taking things out of that original Shefa, and he's mixing things together, you can now have things that are imperfect, you can have diseases, and that's how those things got created. The point being that the direct emanation that comes directly from God is Kulay Taiv. In that first phase, everything is Taiv. It's only in the second phase, as things are being put together from that undifferentiated particle, that these things, what we call Ra, can come about, and it comes about because the imperfection is now mixed into the perfection and gives off something that's no longer 100% perfection. But it's not stage one in creation. Okay, and now we'll read it. Kof Yudali. The Seichel answers the Neshama. The Neshama said, how can you tell me that God only created one emanation of good, but I see these things under a microscope that are diseases, and creation means, and that God created. When we say that God created this world, when we want to talk about God creating the world, we for sure have to talk about first, Brias Haklal, the general creation, which is that undifferentiated particle. That's just the general creation. 
And then we would have to study the details that come from that general creation. Perush. Let me explain myself. Betchila hatava atzman. First, God created the teva itself. That teva is what the word teva is nature, but not a good word. If you remember the English that we read uh, from the English Das Tavunos, they talked about the teva and the ishim. The teva is what's going to give off, quote unquote, all of the natural world. Everything is in this undifferentiated particle in which everything that's going to be created in the natural world is going to have its potential in this particle. And after that, the Rabbon Shalom created Ishim. Ishim means the actual creations, the actual creatures, the tulips, the crocodiles. After that, from that undifferentiated general creation, God that then went into the Ishim, the particulars. When the Rabbi Shalom wanted to create this brand new thing called the natural world where there's good and bad, the first hashpa, the God, the first emanation that God sends to create the natural world is the Shefatoy, the Zehuatoy. The Zois Hashba Atzma Ketzas Mimenu Nedor. And this perfect Hashba, this perfectly good Hashba that's in this particle, this first stage of creation, eventually part of it is Nedar, part of it is deleted. It becomes non existent. Therefore, the perfection can become imperfection. Hi, no. And this is how it happens. All the preparations, the good preparations that went into this particle. Everything that went into this particle in its initial stage is going to be all time. However, the exists the, the idea, because <clears throat> something that's head or something that's a negative doesn't exist. It's a negative. But this idea that there can be less than perfection, who Shahidish Peteva have said they that's what God created anew in that which was perfectly good. Shaheim Haim Klauhara. And that became the general idea of Ra, whether it's disease, whether it's famine, whether it's the idea of evil people, that's where this imperfection comes from. Because the Teva, that nature, the world of nature that God created from Kuloi Toiv, certainly can go to ruination when the Shefa is not sent into it. So long as God is not sending the good Shefa, if he stops it, you end up with a lack of perfection because you constantly need to be attached to that umbilical cord. You need to be attached to that faucet and piping of good. The idea that there can be a disconnect there and therefore imperfection can come and what does the imperfection do? The imperfection takes uh, the perfection and, and makes it imperfect. And after these two ideas became uh, created, the machudish, it's something new, in the general particle, beteva hakloli, then we go into the details and different creatures are created. Some of them, their component parts will be good with a little bad. Some of them will be component parts of bad with a little good. And some of them will be totally bad. And very few, of course, will be totally, completely perfect. There's no perfection. Certainly, all the creatures 
everything that God created was created through the Hashpa. Because I already set forth for you the very first foundation. Nothing's created without that emanation from God. However, and here's the main point you can underline, this hashpa, which gives off the imperfection, is a secondary stage after the first hashpa, which is all good, which I mentioned to you earlier. That in that first particle, that general particle, in there was creation and the idea of the perfect creation and the imperfect. And therefore, within the rules of this particle, from this general particle, in order to build and create, you can take different parts, Murkov, when you order a piece of furniture, they say hovala and harkava is a separate charge. Hovala delivery and harkava assembly. So when the Rabbana Shlolem took this general undifferentiated particle, he assembled different things by taking parts out of this particle. Minatov o minara hamafudash kava. Let's take a look at Rav Friedle in this footnote 200 on page 91. Hashpa'as ha'ishim, the hashpa, the emanation that creates the actual detailed creations, the viruses, the bacteria, all the things that actually come into being. It could be a crocodile, it can be a tulip, it may be a uh, strep, it may be a virus. All these creations, he hashpa shebo achre hashpa sateva. All these emanations, these creations come after the very first emanation that was undifferentiated, and in it there was the shefatoi, and in it there was the idea within this thing, there is the possibility that something can be imperfect. And now in stage two, you pull out of there, I'm just giving you an example. You pull out of there whatever you need to make a tulip, whatever the component, the four component elements, the Rabban Shalom took each one of these elements in the necessary amount and made a tulip. And now you can have a perfect tulip. Why are tulips not perfect? And here in the idea of imperfection lies also the idea of death. Tulips don't live forever like everything else. So there's an imperfection there. Even the most beautiful tulip is not perfect. You can find an even prettier tulip. So even the most perfect tulip has this imperfection in it that it's going to die. Now this, we're not going to get into now to the chet of the Eitz Hadas Tovara, which brought death into the world. We'll leave that discussion for now. But in this undifferentiated particle, God takes water, earth, fire, air, and whatever amounts he needs. And I shouldn't say needs, whatever amounts he decides. And he makes now tulips. He also... From this under, so now you have stage two in creation. I now have a tulip in stage two. The Rabbi Shalom now takes out of this original undifferentiated particle, which is stage one, he takes out this thing called header ashba, which is sort of the idea of things can be imperfect. And he now adds this to the tulip. So now the tulip has fire, water, air earth in it, you got a tulip with this idea of imperfection in it, therefore this beautiful tulip may not be perfectly colored. It's going to wilt. It's going to die because now it's been put together with that imperfection. At what stage of creation? In the second stage of creation, not directly from the original Hashpah Satoy. 
So footnote 200 again. Hashpoas ha'ishim, the emanation that gives off the actual different creations, hi hashpo sheba acharei hashpoas hateva, that is an emanation that happens after the original emanation of that particle, that generalized particle. In that original particle, you have set into it the emanation of good, the Indian, and the idea of header the idea that the cap can be shut off, which would result in an imperfection. Alideze, through this combination in the original particle, tsumtsum hasheva hatoiv, that results in a tsimtsum, because in this original particle, there is the water, air, the fire, and the earth, from which you can pull out and create the most perfect things in the world. But in there, there's also the header, or which we call the lack of Hashpa. The lack of Hashpa, another word, is the tzimtzum, the withdrawal of the Hashpa. So in there is the tzimtzum of the good. Venasa chosa velikui. And therefore, creations that have this, um, this shefa, this header hashefa, it has this potential for imperfection in it, becomes choser, it becomes imperfect, balokoi, and so to speak, damaged. Alken yesh bechuka, kloma, ayedezeh kayemes hafshores, lakachas laavne habinin shela ish mavrias, chalokin mishefa atoy, therefore through this undifferentiated particle, it became possible to take from the particle, chalokin mishefa atoy, certain parts that come directly from the shefa toy in the original particle. And you can also take that idea, that concept that's in there of the tzimtzum, a withdrawal of perfection, which comes from the tzimtzum and results in imperfection. And now, and now in that second stage, you can create creations that are more imperfect, more evil, or less imperfect and less evil. That's already in the second stage of creation. And therefore, the Ramchal says what I told you originally, that from God only emanated, directly from God only emanated one chef on that chef at Taif. That's absolutely true. And in that chef at Taif, it's completely undifferentiated particle. It is in stage two where particular things were created and mixtures were put together that in there, in the mixture was put in, maybe it won't be a perfect tulip. And there we get the wilting tulip and the dying tulip, that stage two of creation, past the original step one, which emanated directly from God, and directly from God only came the Hashpa HaToy. <clears throat> Next, page 91. Ein Metzias Hara, Aidei Bittl Gomeshel Hashpa, El Aidei Bittula B'Mektis. Okay, the Ulam Tira, you will see, he ain't any omission is battle hash ball agamri. I am not telling you that the good hash ball has been completely annihilated. In other words, once the imperfection got a hold of the perfect, the imperfection completely annihilated the perfection, and what you have is only imperfection. Ki oz ho you misbatlam vade kolham and sois. Because then everything would cease to exist. There has to be in there the mixture. The imperfection cannot completely take over. The evil cannot completely take over. The Ramchal will talk about this later, that no matter how much evil there is in the world, and we say, I can't believe this, um, the, the evil's taking over the world, the evil will never completely take over the world to the point that the world will, will have to be destroyed. So the fact that there is this imperfection given off in stage two does not mean that perfection's been annihilated from the world because if that wasn't here, if that 
potential still wasn't here, the world couldn't exist. Because what did we just say as a principle? The kasha of the neshama was something that is a negative cannot give off creation. That was the whole question about the viruses. If you can see a virus moving under a microscope, that means it's a living thing. It's a living thing, something the Rabbi Shalom had to create this living thing. Because just by not sending hashpa, shutting off the tap is not going to create an elephant. You have to do an affirmative act to create. So therefore, if what was left in the world, listen to this very carefully, there's a side otsum. If what's only left in the world is Ra, where does Ra come from? The shutting off of the tap, the lack of hashpa. That's where the Ra comes from. If you shut off the tap completely, what would happen to the world? If the world was completely taken over Chas Sholem Be Ra, and Ra is Heder, Ra is the lack of Hashpa'ah, then the world can't exist on a lack of Hashpa'ah. There has to be Hashpa'ah Satoy, otherwise nothing can exist. From a lack of Hashpa'ah, which gives off Ra, and if that's all that remained was Ra, which is a lack of Hashpa'ah, then the world could not exist. A, a world can't exist on lack of hashpa. Let's think about the human being. What do we say about a human being? A human being doesn't have a default setting that because his heart was beating a second ago, it's going to beat a second from now. And therefore, because uh, if a person believes he's on such a default setting, then that person would have would say that I got a heart attack because God sent me a heart attack. If not for God interfering in my life, my heart would have just kept on beating, but God came and gave me a heart attack. That's not correct. God doesn't give anybody a heart attack. It's the opposite. God every second gives a person beat hard, beat hard, beat hard. God can shut off the tap and the heart doesn't beat. But God can shut off the tap one uh, in different ways. Eyes, chas v'shalom, don't work, but the person remains living. Ears, chas v'shalom, don't work, but the person remains living. The v'shalom can shut off the tap and say, heart stop beating, and the person dies. Once the tap is completely shut off, so let's take, again, the human being. The v'shalom partially shuts, shuts off the tap, and therefore the person gets a strep throat. The Baruch Shalom says, throw it healthy, 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 throw it healthy. The Baruch Shalom shuts off, throw it healthy. And Loyalenu, this creepy thing that crawls around that can be seen under a microscope called strep, infects the throat. And the person gets very sick, he gets fever, he needs an antibiotic. But the person is alive, he's living. What did the Rabbana Shalom do? He cut off a little of the Shefa. The liver shefa is working, the kidney shefa is working, the heart shefa is working, the brain shefa is working, the throat shefa needs help. It needs some help there because he's not getting throat shefa, but he's living. But what happens if, now in this case, the person's getting good shefa, he's getting good brain shefa, he's getting good heart shefa, he's getting good kidney shefa, he's getting good liver shefa, and therefore he lives. He's not getting good throat shefa. The, the, the shefa throat was cut off, and he needs a reforce shalema from his strep. But he's the beneficiary of shefa tari, even with the strep. But what happens if the Rabbana Shalom says, heartbeat, 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 and then the Rabbana Shalom doesn't say anything? The heart stops beating, the person dies. A person can't live once the shefa becomes a negative, the tap is shut off completely and the positive shefa is not flowing. That's death. So now imagine a world in which evil completely takes over the world. The whole, sh where does evil come from? The shefa, the header ha shefa. There's no shefa ra. Evil in the world. Uh, comes to the world the same way the strep comes to the throat. 
The strep comes to the throat because the throat's not getting the affirmative shefa taif. And evil comes to the world because the world's not getting the affirmative shefa taif for the world. When the shefa taif to the human being completely stops and he has no shefa taif, he dies. If the world would ever come to a point where there's no shefa taif, completely cut off, and that's all there is is ra, what is ra? A lack of shefa. What happens when there's a lack of shefa? A human being no longer gets shefa taif. What happens to him? He dies because the ra can't keep anything going. The ra is a negation. The ra can't keep a human being alive. Even the most evil person has to have some shefa. Even the most evil person, his heart is beating because he's getting shefa, heartbeat, 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 go to the Shalom, stops it. But a person can't live a physical life, live, the, the, the umbilical cord to a physical evil life cannot be the evil. Evil cannot give off life. Evil is the result of a header. It's the negation of shefa that in stage two gave off the virus. But the evil itself is not a life-sustaining thing. So if, just like a human being, when the shefa toy gets cut off, he dies. The world, no matter how evil the world gets, if the shefa toy is cut off, then what's left? The lack of shefa. A lack of shefa means the world ceases to exist. It just implodes because a lack of shefa can sustain or create anything. So therefore, no matter how bad the world gets, we're still in a state of machadish b'chol yom tomid maaseh There's a shefa coming to keep the world going. Otherwise, if the world was 100% evil, Evil cannot create and evil cannot sustain because evil is the lack of shefa and a lack can't sustain anything. So Ramchal says, This is the lack of shefa that I spoke about that can't create or sustain anything. What we're talking about here is that it is nespato Partially, now he's going to explain what we just spoke about. It's possible for a human being to get sick, but he doesn't die. A person that's sick, he has strep, but he doesn't die. What is he living through? He's living through Shefa Toiv. His heart is working, his kidneys are working, his liver is working, his ears are working, his fingers are working, his brain is working, everything is working. He's getting the shefa. And he's living. But his throat has strep. So he's not getting throat shefa. It's like a person that's sick, but he's not dying. Cain, similarly, and from a human individual level, the truth for the world. So too, when the Rav created the world and he created that undifferentiated original particle that was Kulay Taif, ruination came in stage two to that particle when that Hashpa'a, the good Hashpa'a was closed off from it. So the concept of the imperfection came about from the closing down of some hashpa. For Loyla Gamri, you can't completely close down the hashpa because then everything implodes. And evil and bad things can happen from this imperfection in the creation. This is just kilkulam, it's the ruination in the existence of the original undifferentiated perfect particle. And therefore the Ramchal through the Seichel says, therefore my original principle is true forever. 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu only sent a Shefa Taiv and he only created the world through Taiv. God doesn't do anything evil. The evil comes about through the lack of the Shefa when that faucet gets turned off partially or completely, which is death. That where, that's where the evil, the diseases, the viruses come from, and that can only occur in stage two of creation, not stage one. We'll end here for today. We'll end the next time, and this is basically the, what we read about in the English, and we have the benefit of having read the English, which is our uh, mother tongue, and hopefully some point it will become our step stepson tongue, and Lashon Kaddish will become our mother tongue. In fact, there's a piece uh, in the Chedushia Rim, they quote, the Chedushia Rim was the first Gera Rebbe. He lived in the 1850s. He was, became Rebbe in the 1850s, the first Gera Rebbe. And uh, he said that when you start seeing a world in which Jews stop talking all the languages of their countries, the French, the, uh, the, the Spanish, when you, stop, when you start seeing the Jews of all the countries stopping to speak their, their languages and starting to learn Lashon Kaidish, that's the bright sign that Mashiach is about to come so that we can understand what he's talking to us about. Okay, I'm sure Mashiach knows French and Spanish, but I'm sure he wants to talk to us in Lush and Kaidish. So the Chdush says, when you begin seeing that conversion, the Jews are, get, are forgetting their French and their English, and they're moving towards Lush and Kaidish, you have a bright light signal of Mashiach. So we had the advantage of reading in our mother tongue, our temporary mother tongue, that Das Tavunas in English, and now we've seen it in the Lush and Kaidish. So we understand the basic concept, which is the last line we just read in the Ramchal on page 91. The principle is true forever. HaKadosh Baruch Hu only was mashpia toiv to the creation in that first undifferentiated particle. And that's God's direct creation. The only creation that something from nothing, as Nachmanides taught us, is that first particle. After that first particle, things are created from the particle. So at that point, things are created from things. Things are created from the first particle. So it's something from something. It's yesh meyesh. The biggest part of creation that no one can ever copy in any which way is that direct emanation from God, which results in yesh meyayin, something from nothing. Nobody can ever do that. You can dream about it. You can never do it. If you'd like to spend some time in your room today, uh, sit down on a chair and, and paint a picture without paint and without an easel and without any paper and tell us tomorrow if you were successful in painting a picture without any supplies. Create something from nothing. So that yesh me'ayin is that godly creation. That first particle. That first particle is that, that is what is directly the creation of God and no one can ever do that again. And in that stage of creation, it's kuloi toiv. And that's not gonna change. That's a forever principle, the Ramchal says. In stage two, when something is gonna be created out of that particle, something from something, in that act of creation is already the idea of lack of shefa, and when you combine lack of shefa with shefa, you get an imperfect shefa, which is in stage two, not in stage one. And that's what Rafid Lelda will explain on page 91 in that long footnote, the bracketed footnote number 25, which we'll be to take a look at next time we learn the Das Runos. So again, tomorrow's schedule is 9.30. Uh, we'll be learning Gemara Chan the Hanukkah Sugya. And then at 10.15, we'll be going back to Beratius. Please contact me today um, by email, by phone, if you're interested in picking up and, and learning Masech the Shavist with the laws of Shemitah 
after we finish this Hanukkah sugya, be right after Hanukkah. And in order to order the Sforim so that we have them right after Hanukkah, we would have to order it within the next two or three days. And again, we're looking at using the Mishnayis Behira, which is on the Seth the Shariyas. We use this for Shkalim. It's the one that has the pictures and all the nice pictures. And it has charts, pictures. And that's about 45 or 50 shekel. And in order to learn the halacha, as I said, it's every seven years. We made Aliyah. We live in Eretz Yisrael. It's the beautiful mitzvah of Shemitah. It's not just to know it. We're going to have to live it. It's going to be all over. What fruits and vegetables will you buy next year? What fruits and vegetables do you not want to buy next year? Etc. All these questions. We're going to be using Rav Ramon Sefer. It comes in Hebrew and English. Uh, this is the English volume. We'll use the English volume. And again, beautiful safer, all kinds of colorful charts so that you can open it and understand what the halacha is. For those of you who have gardens and in your gardens you're growing fruits or vegetables, you have a, a pomegranate tree, you have a lemon tree, you have a date tree, an olive tree, whatever you have, you need to know what you can and cannot do during Shemitah. This safer, because it is a big safer, and for those who already have it, they're sort of plastic pages, they're not paper pages. So this is about a hundred or so shekel, but it's worth the investment because you're going to be reading it. It has a wonderful index. You're going to be reading it so you know how to live in Eretz Yisrael next year in Yetz Hashem with Mashiach Tzitkein. All those yid need Yeshua Shav Yeshua, so all yid need Rafur Shav Rafur, so all yid need Nacham Shav Nacham, so all yid need Brachas to get all the Brachas, no dash pas that day from the Rabbi Nishalayim, and Yeshua's Nachamus Rafur's Brachas can only come from the Rabbi Nishalayim when he wants, how he wants, if he wants to use a shleir, only through the shleir he chooses. When we believe this and internalize it and live it, we're doing a Gilei Yichud for ourselves, and every Gilei Yichud is donated to Klal Yisrael's Gilei Yichud. We reach the point, critical mass, where this Gili Ayichud, the Rebbe Shalom says, I'm sending Mashiach today to finish off the Gili Ayichud, go to the base Hamikdash, bring him Maktas HaShekel, and bring a Korban, we should be Zaycha, Yiratim, we should be Zaycha today. Everybody, please take care of yourselves. Um, do what you need to do, when you need to do it, how you need to do it. Uh, last week, they had a, a Goyro I don't know what the girl means. They threw a lottery and they decided they were going to open 15 malls around Eretz Yisrael. And they threw a lottery. And uh, from this lottery, they picked out the names of different malls as a test to see whether it would work or whether it would increase the morbidity rate. One of the malls that won was big in Beit Shemesh. So the big in Beit Shemesh is open. Everybody wants to run to big. We haven't been big in so long. Okay, so in the news last night, now the, the, the place was only open for one or two days. In the news last night, they already said that the health ministry is considering locking down all the malls again because they have photographs of what was going on in these 15 malls. And there were way too many people in the malls way too many people who were not following the rules. And the health ministry says, you know what, maybe we should close down all the malls and delay the mall business altogether again. So where you go, how to go, when to go, besides what the government tells you, you have to have some seicho to know whether it makes sense or doesn't make sense for everybody's particular circumstance. So please take care of yourselves, remain healthy, the Baruch Shalom should say, Hashpoz, Hatoyiv, Toyiv, Toyiv, Ma'oyiv to everybody to look after themselves so that we'll be able to, with, with full body strength and healthy strength and with a big smile on our faces, the Simcha Atsuma Baraba, greet Mashiach Tzidkenu today. We'll be able, I don't know what the traffic's going to be, but we'll be able to get on 417s, we'll be able to get in our cars and we don't hunk. When Mashiach comes and we need to drive to Yerushalayim, be patient. Don't hunt the next year in front of you. Give everybody time to get to Yerushalayim. 
We should be able to do that today with a simcha atzuma. Amen. Everybody have a wonderful day. Zayi